Hello, I'm Michael McHugh, Editor-in-Chief and Creator of Mind Food. We're creating a very special series, working with our friends at Audi. It's all about change the world, not everyday life. It's a wonderful series where we're talking to a range of people about how you can make changes to the world you live in without having to change everyday life. It's a philosophy shared by Audi with their new hybrid electric vehicle, the A3 e-tron, a car set to change the way we drive. Hi, my name is Carolyn Enting, Associate Editor of Mind Food, and today we're here at the AUT meeting with Derek Handley, entrepreneur. Hi Derek. Hi. Now Derek, your CV is extraordinary, so forgive me, I'm going to have to refer to my piece of paper for this. But you started business in 2001, co-founded the Hyper Factory, one of the first agencies in the world to recognise the power of mobile devices, connecting consumers, brands and mass media. Now you've teamed up with Richard Branson on the B team, you were the founding CEO and now you're entrepreneur in residence. Right. Now I understand you're also named the Silicon, Silicon Alley 100 and you're also currently working with the AUT in Auckland. Yep. So can you start from the beginning and tell us a little bit about your journey as an entrepreneur? I, well, I went to university, I did the architecture and finance. Um, I wasn't 100% sure what I wanted to do. I thought I wanted to be an architect, uh, but quickly I decided I wanted to start ventures. And it took me a long time to realize that I still see myself as an architect in many ways, but an, architecture of, an architect of ventures and ideas as opposed to buildings. So when I graduated, maybe six months after I got my first job, I started companies. And since then I've never not started companies or been involved in them and you know, never had a, I guess, proper job. Uh, so it, it, it was partly out of drive and, and um, necessity, but it was also partly out of this idea that, you know, if you start and build organized organizations, then you can create your own destiny. And, um, that's a journey that I don't think I'll ever not be on. Do you think entrepreneurship is an inherent talent or is it something that can be learned? I think it can be both. I think that people that say that it's an inherent talent uh, are doing disservice to possible future entrepreneurs. Um, I was surrounded by them as a child. My family had their own small business and my grandparents and my uncle. Uh, so that made it less risky, but um, I think that, you know, anyone if with the right mindset and the right uh, mentality can go out and start a venture of any sort. What would be your advice to budding entrepreneurs? The first thing I think is if it's early and you're young I would just start, you know, which is kind of the mentality I went out there with, which was if you fail several times it won't really matter in the end because you'll learn a huge amount. You know, say you did that for 10 years and you were 30 and you were failed three entrepreneurial ventures, what you would learnt in that process is vastly more than what you might have learned in an ordinary course of a career and not only about business or about creating things but also about yourself. So the number one thing is just to start. For people who don't know what the B team is, in a nutshell, can you explain what they do? I think the V team's um, goal really is to change the perception of what the role of business is and that includes obviously every entrepreneur in the world as well as every CEO. Um, you know, we've been being told that the role of business is to maximise shareholder profits at the, ex at the expense of anything um, uh, on people or the planet, whereas you know, the model and the mission of the BTIM is to broaden that and say that the business should be creating wealth and profits at the same time as creating social and environmental uh, positive impacts. Do you have any examples of the BTIM and the work they do and how that's affecting change in the world today? Yeah, I mean, I think largely its first purpose is to collect a, a group of like-minded CEOs and leaders from around the world who believe in this mission. You know, the business should be a driver of well-being for people and the planet, as well as money and profits. And by just creating that team is a, is a statement and um, putting it out there. Now, them as individuals are each advocating different messages, and as a collective, they're advocating messages united uh, around key issues of, from corruption to how you measure social and environmental impact. So in these endeavours they are continuing to raise the, the awareness and the bar of what we should be expecting from CEOs and what we should be expecting from those guys and girls themselves. Um, and they're individually working on projects in their own organisations in addition to, you know, I guess more advocacy type approach that you might, you know, you might call it. Is it true when you became the BE team's founding CEO that you donated your time for a year? There's several reasons. One, uh, I had been relatively successful with the Hyper Factory um, uh, selling that business 
and not so successful that you know you can become a, a significant philanthropist and uh, you know give lots of money away. Um, and I wanted to do something innovative in philanthropy, so I thought that giving a year of an entrepreneur's time can be quite systemic and quite uh, transformative, given the right opportunity, because the energy that you know, an entrepreneur can bring to an opportunity if you give them a year and a problem is almost the kind of energy that's very difficult to buy. So that was one essence of the idea. What is something unique that I can do from a philanthropic perspective um, to contribute in some meaningful way that isn't money? The second thing was I really wanted to learn about what the future of business looks like and what this intersection of social and environmental and um, financial blends was going to be. And the best idea I could come up with was to donate time to the organizations that might be able to immerse myself and teach me about them. And it just so happened that the B team became that. Um, both the MBA of this industry or this movement for me, but also an opportunity for me to contribute in an entrepreneurial way to create something that's of value, uh, you know, I guess I hope to the global community in this conversation and this movement. You've moved from founding CEO of the B team to entrepreneur in residence. What does that involve? Well, an entrepreneur in residence generally means you're in an organization, it could be a venture fund or it could be a big company, and you are either trying to be entrepreneurial within that context uh, to innovate and create new thinking, or you're actually literally trying to create a new venture. So my context is that I'm trying to create a new venture, and that actually was always the intention of you know, having this experience with the B team or any whatever other organization it was going to be. I was going to do it for one or two years and create something new that became, I hope, some form of a model of how you can create a blended, blended value that has social, environmental and financial outcomes. So that's really the journey I'm on. I'm designing a new organization, a new company, um, and thinking about new products, new services that will be in some way groundbreaking. And so that's uh, groundbreaking in the way it contributes to people or the planet. That's where I am at the moment. That's kind of the, uh, I'm deep in the process of of packaging up a couple of things and you know next year we'll start to launch uh, a few different initiatives. So watch this space. Definitely watch the space. <laughs> Speaking of bigger picture stuff, I understand one of your personal goals is to travel into space. What motivates you to travel into space and why? I think a lot of people, well a lot of kids always wanted to go to space. Um, I was no different. You know when I was very young it was quite a passion for a few years. I kind of got off it for a while and then as I heard about these things like Virgin Galactic, I just said, well, as soon as I have the ability to do that, I want to be involved. And so, you know, signed up to do that as soon as I got a ticket. Um, I think there's many reasons why human beings should try and go into space and rekindle what was essentially, you know, a huge passionate endeavor around the world in the 60s um, and has kind of fizzled out. So. This private privatization of space is a really interesting uh, journey, um, and so I'm just excited to be a part of this early beginnings of private space travel. And considering since the 50s, only 500 something people have gone to space, um, you know, to be in the first thousand human beings to go to space is something that is just really incredibly exciting. Earlier we talked about if you're going to be an entrepreneur in business, just starting. You've written a book, Heart to Start. Can you tell us about that? The book is really a journey. It's a journey of uh, how I came to this idea to, to create companies, the problems and challenges and difficulties that you know are, are the reality of trying to build companies, and um, the ups and downs of the life cycle of, of, of ventures. And to the point where I started with a different set of values and goals and ended up with the values and goals that we've been talking about that are kind of really grounded in what the B team is, uh, exists to achieve. Uh, so it's a journey as much about my own journey in terms of the way I think and change my priorities as it is about what it's really like to build a company from the ground up, um, you know, a small to medium sized kind of venture and take it around the world. And I wrote it uh, partly to just do that for myself and partly because I wanted to write a book that I would have wanted to read have read when I was starting. I think that there are lots of entrepreneurial books and lots of biographies about people who build businesses, 
Um, but there are very few that really go into a lot of the raw honesty of the difficulties and the challenges and the risks that you have to take. And so this was my attempt at being as pretty much as raw and honest as you can be because those are the lessons that are useful when you're actually trying to do this. Um, I always found when I read books there was lots of great lessons I could take about uh, success but there were very few about what it was like to fail consistently over and over again and the anecdotes in the those books were usually about the good things that happened and the amazing deals that got pulled off but there was not enough depth when things went wrong and I was always asking how did that happen how did you get around it how did you survive after it and so that's really partly you know the undercurrent also of the book it's about how you continually get over and get past things when they go wrong so you obviously did a few wrong turns along the way I'm still doing wrong turns along the way <laughs> it's constantly wrong turns but that's okay I think I see it like it's you know it's a it's a general direction you know it's like this this river is going in one particular direction and you're always kind of moving from side to side and you know you're, you're moving not necessarily directly forward but as long as you're constantly moving towards the objective and along the way you're often misguided or misdirected and making mistakes and um, I, I don't I don't feel any different now than I do than I did you know in those years building a business I'm making different mistakes now new types of mistakes but that's okay and I'm quite happy to do that if you'd like to hear more stories in our series, Change the World, Not Everyday Life, go to mindfood.com. There you will also have the chance to win an Audi A3 e-tron for a year. Check it out and see how you and the Audi A3 e-tron could be the perfect match.